اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ علی سیدنا محمد و علیہ طاہری With the help of God, inshallah, we start to discuss Surah Al-Baqarah. And uh, of course, this is a very long surah. And would, inshallah, if Allah gives us life and tawfiq, we will continue as, as much as we can. Now, Surah Al-Baqarah is the first surah, they say, which is revealed in Medina. But you know, this is a very long surah, and uh, not all of the surah has been revealed at once. There is a sort of uh, discussion between the, uh, the commentators of the Quran, whether this is the first surah revealed in Medina or Surah Al-Muttafafin, those who, uh, when, they, uh, when they sell, they give less, and when they buy, they, of course, uh, want to uh, give less price. Uh, if you remember when we were discussing Surah Muttafafin, we said that there is this hadith that when the Prophet entered Medina, uh, the people there were not very honest in their buying and selling. And they were Muttafafs. And that's why Surah Muttafafin is believed to be the first surah revealed in Medina. However, this is not uh, supported by majority of the exegetes. The majority of the commentators say that the Surah Al-Baqarah was the first surah which started to reveal in Medina. And uh, of course, as soon as the Prophet entered Medina, the, the verses did not start to, to be revealed. One uh, sort of... Uh, uh, supposition we have is that the Quran was continuously being revealed to the Prophet throughout the 23 years of his uh, mission. However, this is not right. The Quran reveal was revealed in very crucial instances, points in the life of the Prophet and the Muslims. So, for example, one incident happened and the Muslims were waiting for Quran to be revealed to explain that incident. For example, in the Battle of Uhud, you know, that's a very, very crucial uh, incident, and the Muslims were shaken by the defeat because initially they were given the, uh, the promise of victory, and then the defeat came, and then they didn't know why, how to explain that. Of course, many people were shaking their faith. If we are Yaquluna in Kanalana, Men al Amru Shayun, Mawkotel Naha Huna, if we were on the right path, if we were really uh, supported by God, we should have been killed here. So they were waiting for the Quran to be revealed and explained for them. And this may have, for example, in some cases, taken a few weeks uh, before the Quran was revealed. In average, uh, the, about f sometimes two or three surahs were revealed every year. Or we, if we deal with shorter surahs, four or five surahs were revealed every year. Every couple of months, for example, one surah was revealed. Of course, at the beginning in Mecca, the short surahs were revealed more uh, uh, with uh, shorter intervals than when we come to Medina. Therefore, when we say that surah al-Baqarah is revealed in Medina, uh, we shouldn't think that immediately as the Prophet entered Medina, the surah started to reveal. They say about six months after the hijrah, the first revelations in Medina started to come. And the first revelations, of course, were the opening chapters, the opening verses of Surah Baqarah. Now, Surah Baqarah is something that Muslims lived with for the whole duration of the Medinan period. It started to, to be revealed a few months after Hijrah, and some say that the last verse revealed to the Prophet is also in Surah Baqarah, verse number 281. Allah, be, uh, take heed or uh, 
beware of a day when you return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then everyone is recompensed for what they did. Verse number 281 of Surah Baqarah, many, many commentators say that this is the last verse revealed to the Prophet. So if this is true, then the first verses revealed in Medina is in Surah Baqarah. The last verse revealed in Medina is also in Surah Baqarah. And that means Muslims lived with Surah Baqarah for the whole period of Medina. Now, of course, in the interval of this uh, revelation of the surah, many other surahs were revealed. But uh, still certain verses were revealed and the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that uh, place that in uh, such and such place in Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, one may say why this method of revelation was uh, used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, for example, one surah has not finished yet. Of course, this was not the common thing. Usually the surahs were revealed all at once, many of the surahs. But sometimes it was the case. Before a surah finishing, another surah was revealed. And then uh, after, for example, a couple of surahs were revealed, certain verses were revealed again, and Prophet said, place that in Surah Baqarah, for example, or in such and such place. Or sometimes the end of certain surahs were revealed at first, and then other verses were revealed. Prophet said, put it in the beginning, like Surah Ali Imran. We know that Surah Ali Imran, the opening verses up to verse number 80, something like that, are about Mubahala, which uh, took place uh, just towards the end of the Medinan period. And the, the verses which comes afterwards are about the Battle of Uhud, which were revealed in the fourth year uh, or, or end of third year of the Hijrah. So we see this sort of uh, uh, unevenness in the, the way the surahs were uh, uh, put in order. Of course, all of that was by the command of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So the question is why this method was used. For example, before a surah finishing, before the ayat of a surah were, were finished, then another surah was revealed. The Prophet uh, preached that surah, then certain other verses. Uh, the reason may be that uh, it's just like uh, if one of us uh, is writing a book, and we complete a previous chapter after we have, of course, started another chapter, because other things come to our mind, and uh, we think that, well, this is good for the previous chapter, let me put this in that chapter, and then finish this chapter, or after I have finished a couple of other chapters, I will attend to the first chapter again. Of course, this is with regards to us, with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he is, of course, all knowledgeable, he wouldn't act like us, but because certain things happen which are related to the theme of the previous, previous chapter, then, of course, uh, the, when the verses are revealed, the Prophet is told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, he's inspired that these verses should be placed in, for example, a previous chapter that which has been already revealed. Anyhow, so if we say that Surah Baqarah started to, re to be revealed about six months after Hijrah, and these were the first verses being revealed in Medina, then we can somehow guess the circumstances. The Prophet has come to Medina, <laughs> And Medina is thirsty of revelation, is thirsty of the Quran, because we know that all Medina had converted to Islam before Prophet even setting foot in the city. And the, the, the Prophet's missionaries had gone there, they had preached the Quran, all the tribes had converted to Islam. The Jews, of course, were overwhelmed by other tribes who uh, had uh, converted to Islam, they were waiting, but of course for a few months no Quran was revealed. It was only the Prophet who was preaching and everyone was of course happy uh, to have the Prophet as uh, the leader and waiting of course for new verses of the Quran coming. And during those few months uh, uh, where uh, there was no Quran and only the Prophet was arranging and organizing the affairs in Medina, many things happened which needed to be addressed by revelation. Uh, there was uh, the uh, confrontation with Jews or 
con Jews confronting the Prophet, because Prophet initially did not want to confront the Jews. They had peace treaty. They said all of us are citizens of one city. All of us should defend each other. If someone attacks the Jews, Muslims would defend them. If someone attacks the Muslims, Jews should defend them. But gradually, the Jews started to uh, set a claim on revelation uh, in a monopolized way that this is something which comes to us. It doesn't come to you, and we are actually the uh, the uh, we have the legacy of this tradition of revelation. Uh, the prophet is not actually uh, telling the truth; he's not honest. These things started to come, and therefore they needed to be addressed. And you see that the major part of Surah Baqarah is dealing with this dialogue between the Quran and the Jews about what they did, their past history. Uh, why this honor was taken away from them, and all these things, uh, why it was uh, the Quran was revealed to a Gentile, not to Jews, and all these things which are uh, discussed in Surah Baqarah. And then the, uh, the emergence of uh, the hypocrites, Munafiqun. And that was also a very important and critical thing which. Uh, took place in the first few months in Medina, and the Quran had to address that as well. So we see the opening verses of Surah Baqarah talks with the categorization, about the categorization of people in the, the believers, disbelievers, and the hypocrites, and many verses are actually uh, uh, dedicated to the discussion of the uh, different qualities of munafiqun and what they did. <coughs> Now, uh, we see that, for example, certain verses of Surah Baqarah uh, are revealed in, uh, with regards to Hajj, which was uh, during the Hajjatul Wada of the Prophet. So the 10th, for example, verses 196 to 203 are uh, discussing uh, the, the rituals of Hajj. And this was about Hajj al-Tamattu, and this was about the Hajj of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in the year, uh, year 10. And uh, certain verses talk about riba, which was actually the, the, where the latest uh, legislations uh, in Medina. And therefore, uh, all in all, if we want to put uh, uh, whatever we see in Surah Baqarah together, we can see that uh, the Muslims actually in Medina lived with Surah Baqarah all through the Medina period from the beginning to the end, Surah Baqarah was with the people. And that's why this surah is very important. And that's why the, sometimes when the Prophet was asked, uh, for example, what is the most important or most meritorious surah of the Quran, he said it's Surah Baqarah. Because it's uh, discussed many v uh, uh, v variant issues, uh, uh, diverse issues. Uh, which were very important for the social life. That's, that's the main thing. The social life of the Muslims in Medina are all discussed in Surah Baqarah. Now, there's one other uh, uh, tradition uh, from the Prophet uh, which uh, tells us about the merits of Surah Baqarah. Uh, Tabrasi mentions in Majma al Bayan that Prophet, when he was asked which surah of the Quran is, 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 is the best one, Afzal, having more merits, he said Surah Baqarah, and then he was asked which ayah in Surah Baqarah has the most uh, the best merit, and he said it's Ayatul Kursi. Now, of course, one of the things which uh, has given this high uh, importance to Surah Baqarah is Ayatul Kursi. You know, we know Ayatul Kursi is like the summary of what we believe about Tawheed. It is actually the banner of Tawheed. Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum. Al hay talks about the Sifatul Zat, which is the most important aspect of Sifatul Zat. And Qayyum talks about Sifatul Fail, which actually puts all the sifat al-fail, the attributes of act of Allah together, and then describing this. So uh, no other verse in the Quran has 
such a strong uh, definition and uh, concise strong definition about Tawheed. And uh, therefore, the verses in Surah Baqarah, of course, are very different with each other. Some of the verses talk about uh, more mundane issues. And therefore, the value of those verses are related to those subjects. Some talk about more spiritual issues like Ayatul Kursi. I think we discussed this before. Not all the verses of the Quran are equal uh, in their merits. Not that uh, they are not miracle or not revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, depending on the subject that they deal with, they find importance or uh, significance. Uh, since all days, uh, Muslim scholars have written about this difference between the merits of the verses of the Quran. For example, Ghazali has written a book, Jawahir al-Quran, the jewels of the Quran. And he discusses there, for example, the example is mine, but he gives many other examples, that you cannot compare Ayatul Kursi with Ayatul Dain, you know, this long verse in Surah Baqarah, at the end of Surah Baqarah, which talks about when you borrow money, write it down, for example, and then people should, those who witness should, uh, should provide witness whenever they are someone. Well, that is talking about social relations and how you organize your social re relations. That is the value of that verse, which is uh, the value of the subject. But when we come to Ayatul Kursi or verses which talk about Tawheed, of course, the value of these verses are somehow elevated because of the elevation of the subject and topic that they are discussing. Notwithstanding, of course, all these verses are valuable, but depending on the subjects, uh, uh, they, they differ. So Ayatul Kursi, he said, is the most meritorious uh, verse in the, in, the, in the whole Quran and in Surah Baqarah. Uh, Imam al-Sadiq uh, has reported to have said that, uh, is reported to have said, Surah al-Baqarah and Surah al-Imran, if you uh, continuously read them, uh, they would uh, be like canopies uh, which would uh, cast shade on the head of the reciter on the day of judgment. That means on that day where everyone is in the heat of the uh, being uh, given their accounts and such things, they, those who recite Surah Baqarah and Surah Ar Imran frequently, they will have this coolness and shade of the contents of these verses protecting them. There is one other thing which uh, I mentioned before we start the verses, uh, to discuss the verses. Uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, has said, and this is a very, very interesting hadith, and which shows that we don't need to actually read the previous books. We know, of course, we, we respect the previous books revealed to the prophets, and we know that they are light as the Quran is the light. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى وَهَارُونَ الْفُرْقَانَ وَرِيَاءً وَذِكْرًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ We gave Musa and Harun furqan, what uh, separated between right and wrong, and ziyaan, uh, light. For the mutaqin, for qanan, wadiyan, wadikran, and reminder for the mutaqin. This, this is the description of the Torah, isn't it? It's just the same as, uh, as Quran. So uh, why shouldn't we go and recite the Torah and recite the Injil the way we recite the Quran while we believe in them? We believe that these are the books revealed by God. Of course, one argument is that, well, they are distorted. We don't know which part is right, which part is wrong. That's true, but still there is light in them. Still there are the, 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 the traces of guidance are there. Now, Prophet says that you don't need to do that because I have been given things which are equal or which amounts to those previous books. Now, this uh, hadith is... Uh, uh, is saying that the Prophet, peace upon him, said the, instead of the Torah, instead of the Torah, 
I was given as tawal the first seven long verses, cha- uh, chapters of the Quran, which starts from Baqarah, ending with Toba. Of course, Anfar and Toba is regarded to be one chapter uh, in this uh, uh, hadith. So these from Baqarah to end of Toba, which you see, the, the theme is like certain discussions which you can find in Torah as well. So the first seven surahs of the Quran, as sab tawal long surahs, are given to me in place, in place of Torah. And I have been given me'in in place of Injil. Me'in are the surahs which follow these, which have almost 100 verses, a little less or more. So these are the me'in. I have been given them, them in place of Injil. Again, if you look into the theme of these surahs, uh, starting from Yunus and going onwards, of course, the uh, scientists of the Quran have argument which one are the main which are, are the masani we don't want to enter that we say after tawal sab tawal comes the main now if you look at the themes you will see that it's very similar to the themes which jesus peace be upon him start, uh, used to uh, discuss of course angel is not with us today angel is a lost book we know that the gospels that we have are just accounts of the life of Isa alayhi salam written. Uh, the first Injil, which is the, uh, the, the, the Gospel of Luke, uh, was uh, written about 70 years after Jesus, uh, peace be upon him. It's just like the Sira books we write about the prophet, peace be upon him. So the Injil is a lost book. But the prophet says, in place of that, I have been given the main. In place of Zabur, I have been given Mathani. And these are Mathani, they're called Mathani because they come after the Me'in. And then uh, I have been given something which uh, you cannot find in Torah and Injil and Zabur, and that is the Mufassal. Mufassal are 67 verses of the Quran starting from Surah Muhammad to the end of the, uh, the Quran. In, and Fuzilto, uh, God has given preference to me with giving me these Mufassal surahs. So uh, where should we place Surah Baqarah in this uh, sort of uh, uh, categorization of the previous books? We would place it in something equal or tantamount to Surah, uh, to, to the Torah. Okay, that is uh, the... Uh, introduction that I just wanted to mention about Surah Al-Baqarah. Now, Surah Al-Baqarah starts with Alif Lam Mim, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Alif Lam Mim, Zalik Al-Kitab, La Raiba Fi. We have discussed already in length about these huruf al or disjointed letters, so I do not repeat them here now. Uh, and we just uh, uh, directly go to the second verse, which is ذَلَكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ خُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ This is the book. There is no doubt in it. Or you can translate it this way. This book, there is no doubt in it. Or this is the book in which there is no doubt. Or this is that book in which there is no doubt. All these are possible. Zalika al-Kitab. Now, Zalika, we translate as this because uh, it's talking about the book, uh, either the whole Quran or the Surah Baqarah, which is now being revealed to the Prophet. Uh, why the uh, this demonstrative pronoun ذَلِكَ which alludes to the far away rather than to something which is close is used the exodus said because of course it's the lofty position of the Quran or the Surah Baqarah that is used but it means this this is the book now uh, we have two ways to translate ذَلِكَ الْكِتَاب one is this is the book or this is the ultimate book this is what you can call a book. Everything else is just uh, 
book figuratively. The book which contains serious matters, the book which contains uh, undoubtable uh, material from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is this one. Now, this is, of course, not a very um, attractive uh, translation. A, a better translation and a better explanation which is given by uh, many exegetes is that this is that book which you were waiting for. This this is, or even if the book means, the book which you were waiting for, the book which you were promised. Now, since uh, the uh, dialogue in Surah Baqarah is in major part with the Jews, we know that the Jews were waiting for a book to be revealed to the last prophet why the Jewish tribes were living in Medina because they had heard a prophet is going to come here at the end of the time you see the concept of end of the time is a very relative thing the, a prophet at the end of the time is going to be uh, appointed here and uh, uh, therefore these Jewish tribes were those orthodox Jews so to speak who were waiting for that prophet. They had migrated to this place to see that prophet. They were actually waiting for that prophet and waiting for a book to be revealed to them. However, the dramatic thing which happened was that when, although they were waiting for that prophet, uh, that prophet happened to be a Gentile, not a Jew, and they could not accept that. It was, it was uh, they were very uh, strong in their nationalism and they, they believe that no prophet will come unless from among the Jews, no Gentile could ever be appointed as a prophet because they regarded Gentiles to be najis. Gentiles are like animals. They have no right whatsoever. They have no spirituality. We are the chosen nation. So a prophet should come from among us. And I, I have discussed before, omi, which is used in the Quran, is a Hebrew term transferred into Arabic, and it means Gentile, from nations, from other nations. Ummi means from other nations. And that is why they did not, they had been told that this prophet is going to be a Gentile, but they did not want to accept it and to believe it. When something came that they knew about it, they rejected it. They rejected it. And this was the, the Prophet. And in Surah Jummah, of course, He is the one who has appointed among the Gentiles a Prophet among the, among the Ummiyeen. And then says, God can give this to anyone. This is the grace of God, not only for the Jews. Now, they were waiting for this book. This is that book. This, and it's very good that Surah Baqarah is placed at the beginning of the Quran, uh, after Surah Hamd, which of course we recite in our Salat all the time. This is that book that you were waiting for. And uh, if we say that this is addressed, uh, of course it's a general address, for the Muslims, Muslims of course were waiting for, for, for a book to come for the Prophet, I mean the, the Arabs in the area, which became Muslim later on, they were waiting for a Prophet and they were waiting for a book. This is that book. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه It means that have no doubt that this is that book. You should have no doubt that this is that book. Uh, or we can say, you see, the, the, the nice thing about the Quran is that you can read it from different perspectives and get different meanings. This is that book, and there is no rape in this book. There is nothing which would cause agitation, which would cause, which would disturb the peace of the heart. Now, what a rape is, uh, first of all, this verse could be, uh, could be read uh, generally, by the reciters, the reciters have read it in two different ways. They have stopped, they have put full stop in different places. 
uh, of course, we don't use full stops in the Quran, but instead of full stop, they say waqf, isn't it? They say you have to do waqf on this word, for example, on this uh, letter. And uh, where should we put the waqf or full stop here? ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه Full stop. Or ذلك الكتاب لا ريب Full stop. In it, there is guidance for the muttaqin. Depending where we put the full stop here, or waqf, as the uh, reciters used to say it, the meaning would, would be changed. This is that book in which there is no doubt is hudan lil muttaqin, it's guidance for the muttaqin. Is one meaning, without any doubt, this is that book. Without any doubt, this is that book. You will find guidance for muttaqin in this book. Now, what's the meaning of raib? Raib is usually uh, translated as doubt, but it is very different from doubt. Doubt is in Arabic is shak. When you have doubt, you have shak. Raib is if shak is very agitating, if shak, the doubt, sometimes, of course, we doubt about something we don't care about, of course. For example, we doubt whether there are other, we doubt if there are other, for example, creatures living in other galaxies. Well, that's not a big deal. Whether they, 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 they live or not, it doesn't agitate us. There are certain doubts which agitate us. That is called rape. Rape is something which takes away the peace of the heart. And that's why, for example, uh, uh, if uh, you find certain things in the Quran which uh, are uh, contradicting or take you away from the guidance, it, it would be agitation, agitation. And in the Quran, of course, uh, for example, we have certain verses which say shak is different from doubt. Uh, like, like, for example, kanu fi shakin murib. They had a doubt which took away their peace, which took away their, their guidance from them. This is uh, shakin murib. Uh, therefore, when we say la rayba fi, it means that it's, there is nothing which could take away your peace. In this book, nothing which would take away take you away from the guidance. Uh, Lareb, this uh, do, uh, depending on the first waqf, this is that book. Have no uh, agitation, uh, no concern about it. It is right. It is truth. Or there is no rape in this book, and it is guidance for the. Muttaqin, inshallah. About this guidance, we will uh, talk, uh, uh, inshallah, next next session. I don't know when next session is going to be after the Ashra, or you will have during the Ashra as well. I, I'm not sure. I suggest we continue if you are in town. I would be in town, inshallah. But uh, the one Sunday will be immediately after Ashura. I don't know whether we, we would. Saturday is Ashura, and then this one Sunday is uh, immediately after that. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, because some people are uh, awake uh, till late on that Saturday. But anyhow, it's, I'm fine. No, okay, inshallah. So next week, inshallah, we'll continue with the meaning of guidance. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa alihi tahiri. Thank you very much indeed, Sheikh. Uh, and glad to see you back uh, that you recovered soon. Thank you. Uh, brothers and sisters, now can we start with some? Do you want it? Uh, can you pass it? Uh, doctor, you want it? You're ready? Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Short one. Al Hay Sifat al Dhat. Al Qayyum Sifat al. Sifat al. Comprehensively uh, includes all Sifat al Fi'l. Because Qayyum is sustainer, isn't it? And sustainer is someone who sustains the creation, so it's sifatul fi'l. Uh, sisters, is there any?
comment or question from your side? No? Nisa, please. Check. So, um, is, there, is there mention in the Quran itself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided on the compilation and which ayah goes in which surah? Um, and my second question is, if the Prophet decided on the method of compilation, what is wrong about that? Uh, no, there is nothing wrong. There's no difference. For us, there's no difference uh, what Prophet said or what Allah said. Because whatever Prophet did or said was out of his wisdom, which was a guided wisdom. And therefore, there's no difference. Now, there are uh, certain views, which uh, is, of course, in absolute minority, uh, which says that the order of the verses were decided by the companions when the Uthmanic uh, text was being compiled at the time of the third caliph. This is, of course, uh, a very weak uh, uh, view, we can say the order of the chapters were decided by the companions, but not order of the verses, because we have many uh, uh, verses in the Quran which say, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي شَكَّ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةً مِنْ مِثْلِهِ Or فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةً مِثْلِهِ in Surah Yunus, that bring one surah like it. And surah is, of course, composed of the verses and the organization of the verses. So we know that these were organized at the time of the Prophet. But whether the chapters were organized at the time of the Prophet or not, probably not, because Amir al Mumin compiled his Quran based on the order of revelation. So it was not important that uh, whether it was in that way or it was compiled in this way. The companions decided, those who compiled the Quran, not even at the time of Uthman, even at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, those who compiled the Quran, like Ubay ibn Kaab and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and we have the order of their Qurans uh, uh, recorded for us, uh, they decided to put the longer chapters at the beginning and the shorter chapters at the end. That's, there's no problem with that. But the, inside these surahs, the verses were organized by the Prophet himself. Thank you. Uh, because one would have thought that even the chapters would have been decided by the wisdom of the Prophet. Uh, yes, as I said, uh, you know, there is nothing that we say usually uh, there's no view that we mention that no one in the past has said it or mentioned it or has supported it. Uh, some people say that this is the case and the order of the chapters are, uh, uh, are organized by the prophet, peace be upon him, or by the instruction of God. And that is why some exodus have tried to uh, say, for example, why this surah comes after that surah. This surah ends here, it talks about such and such concept, and then this surah begins with another concept which is quite related to it. They believe that they are organized by the, uh, by the prophet or by instruction of God. But uh, the evidence does not uh, support this. The evidence is otherwise. It was the companions who decided how to organize the chapters. Thank you. Any sisters? No? Surprise? Hello, so a while ago you alluded that the Quran that Imam Ali presented, salam, the difference between that and the other one was that he also added in it the causes of revelation, which the companions rejected. They didn't want to know about that. And so there wasn't the difference between the order of the chapters, rather that was the difference. Now, no, were we mistaken? That, that's a different thing. That's, that was actually comments which were, or commentaries which were put there. But uh, even the order of revelation is said that uh, was uh, observed in that uh, compilation of Imam Ali alayhi salam. One reason why Imam Ali compiled that in order of revelation and the others didn't was probably they were not aware of the order of revelation. 
That's why we see when uh, we read about the order of revelation of the chapters in different books, we have different accounts of it because they, they don't know for sure the order of revelation and probably the companions at the beginning also were not sure about the order of revelation to compile it in that order uh, but Imam Ali of course he knew everything and also as I said I mean there are many verses in the Quran we really don't know uh, about who are they revealed for example in say for example in Surah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we have they say why a chapter is not revealed to uh, to command us to, to go for jihad and then when a surah is revealed the mention of fighting is uh, is in that surah you see that some of them, those who have disease in their hearts, look at you as they want to die. They're so afraid, so frightened of the jihad and such things. Now, who are those people who were saying, why a surah is not revealed, uh, commanding us to go to jihad? Who are those people who are afraid of jihad? These are the things that Amir al had added to his Quran, and it's lost to us. Even now, there's no, no one knows. Of course, if we go to any country, no one knows who are those, those people. Now, we say that it's not important, it's a general thing, but the details of these things were what Amir Rubin had put on the margin of his Quran. Yeah. So both of them. Thank you. Uh, sisters? Any brother? Yeah, just a minute. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Uh, uh, in this uh, 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 finding the heaven Birmingham, yeah, the so all chapters of the uh, Quran, yeah. Mm. I mean, uh, in there, uh, the first, uh, I mean, the Alif Lam Mim, yeah, and it's continuation of the ayat, the next uh, bits, yeah. But in present Quran, we read Alif Lam Mim, and then there's ayat and the continuation. Do you know whether the ayats were changed later on? Sorry, how is it? You say Alif Lam Mim, Dalek Al Kitab? No, no, I mean, because the uh, chapters uh, found are chapter 9, yeah? Surah na number 9, yeah? Mm -hmm. In that Birmingham, yeah? And it's Alif Lam Mim and continuation of ayat. So Surah Toba, you mean? Uh, no, it's uh, one before, sorry. There were two surahs, yeah? And oh. Fall and Toba, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. If you look, look at, I don't know whether you've seen the copy of the. No, I haven't there. seen. Yeah. No, no, I haven't seen. Yeah, that. but uh, there it's uh, Alif Lam Mim and continues the ayat without the ayah. Yeah, and it doesn't the ayah doesn't finish at Alif Lam Mim. Yeah, in that find uh, in that uh, pages which they found. Yeah. Oh, you know, Alif Lam Mim is part of the next ayah. Yeah. Yeah. But this is this is something which uh, is. Uh, uh, a, a point of discussion between many reciters, whether Alif Lamim is an independent ayah or is part of no, the but, ayah. Uh, in, in the present Quran, we see it's Alif Lamim, then there's Yeah, because the present Quran is based on the uh, view of the Kufiyun. But uh, that one may have been based on view of others like Madaniyun or Basriyun or something. Of course, it's in Hejazi language, Hejazi handwriting, so it's, uh, it's, it predates these Kufic scripts. Uh, and, uh, but uh, yes, this is something which has been a point of uh, discussion. What we are reciting now is based on the Kufa uh, recitation. And Kufa, uh, Kufan, uh, numbering of the verses and even the numbering of the, of the verses are very different in different uh, 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 areas like in Basra, in Medina, in Kufa they had, the, the scholars had differences of opinion on that Thank you, any sisters? Brothers? Yeah? <coughs> yeah? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Um, I hate to come back to this Alif Lam meme, but uh, the, uh, I'm you hate Alif Lam meme. <laughs> no, I hate the discussion because <laughs> it's it's pointless. We don't know what it's exactly there yes. for. But I'm sure in the olden days of folk, as well in so much poetry and in literature going on in in the Arabic script, there must have been letters Alif. Lam, mean which actually signify something material. Should it not? Why you say that? It's because there is, uh, I'm not trying to find reason in it. I'm, I'm trying to see at that time if somebody would have read Alif Lam Mim Zalik Al Kitab. So that Alif Lam Mim might have stood for earth, wind, and fire and then said, you know, there is no. There is no. Uh, no, difference. if that was the case, uh, the commentators of the Quran since the beginning, especially the companions like Abdul Habn Abbas, was of course the the ultimate expert in the Quran. He would have known it. He didn't know, and he said that, for example, these are the uh, sort of codes for the names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. There is no meaning in Alif Lam. There is no meaning in Alif Lam Mim Saad or in Alif Lam Ra. There is no meaning in it. And uh, if the people at the beginning, like Abdullah Ibn Abbas, he didn't know it, it means that it did not signify anything here. Yeah. Uh, Sheikh, you're sitting here and telling us that there is no meaning and nobody knows, and that's fine because that's the reality. But surely, in the time of Rasulullah when he said it, that wouldn't have washed. People have said, "Well, you know, he wouldn't have just said, well, take a guess,' or I'm not telling you.' He must have said something." Yeah, that is very interesting because uh, there is no explanation of these things from the Prophet. It means that uh, he was either not asked about it, which is very. Uh, unusual, isn't it? That was the meaning of this. Or everyone understood that this is a style which uh, they shouldn't ask about it. It's just the style of the Quran using these things. Uh, we have from A'imma or from the companions or from the Tabi'un who have tried to provide explanation for these things. But they are so contradictory with each other. That at the end, we come to this uh, uh, very general view that these are a secret between God and the Prophet. And maybe this is what the Prophet has explained to others, that this is a secret between me and God. You don't need to know it. That's all. Thank you, uh, sisters. Uh, any sisters? No? no? Sheikh, just coming back to what Mahbub was saying. So if you say this is a Kufi um, uh, method of um, compilation, so that is at least, uh, at least 25 years after the Prophet's death in terms of time. Um, so it's truly a Shi Quran. I'm not trying to... Uh, yeah, uh, I have said this before. Any, no, yeah? I've said, actually, this Quran that we are reciting yes. uh, is a Shi recitation, Shi'i... Uh, numbering, Shi'i marking, you see, these diacritical marks, dots, everything. Because initially, and this is very important to notice, that this whole industry of the Quran, or this undertaking of the Quran, was a Shi'i thing at the beginning. <coughs> Mainly Shi'is were in these fields. I mean, since the beginning, Abu al-Aswad al-Duali started to, of course, uh, by the instruction of Amir al-Rumin, to uh, invent marks to differentiate between Fatha Kasra and he, he used dots of course in place of Fatha Kasra and then Khalil ibn Ahmad uh, al-Farahidi who was again a very very prominent Shia scholar he invented these marks Fatha Kasra and dots for differentiating between Ta and Ba and Qaf and Fa he did it the recitation itself, the method of recitation, uh, is from Hafs, who was a companion of Omar Jafar al-Sadiq, and very well-known Shia, and that's why the Sunnis do not accept his hadith. They accept his recitation, but they do not accept his hadith, because he was expert in the field. From Asim, Asim ibn Abin Najud, who was, again, a prominent companion of Omar al-Baqir, well-known Shia, from Abu Abdul Rahman al-Sulami, who was a companion of Amir al mumin from Amir al mumin alayhi salam. So the whole Quran that we are 
reading now is something completed by the in the Shi'i world. But since the expertise was, of course, universal, everyone accepted that, and now 95% of Muslims recite this Quran, and another 5% wash, uh, uh, rec uh, recite the, uh, the, the, the version of Varsh. Now, uh, it is, I think, Ironic that the Shias are said to believe in tahrif of the Quran, to be negligent of the Quran, not care. And the Quran that every Muslim reads now is something that the Shias have accomplished. During the, and Kufa was, of course, a, a Shi, Shi place, a place for Shi'i scholarship. And therefore, if you hear someone is Kufi or something is Kufi, you have to 75, 80% attributed to the Shia scholars, yes. So tell me about those 5%, what do they follow? Uh, how, they how they, they recite Warsh from Nafi uh, in Yemen, in uh, Mauritania, some other places, and that I have that Quran, maybe I bring it next week to show you. There are var variations uh, in, in reading, for example, La uh, Tofatta or La Tufta or for example, in, 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 in verse uh, in Surah Araf. These are very, very small variants. We have other recitations. You know why these recitations came about? Initially, the Quran was written in Kufic script, and there was no dots, no diacritical marks. Now, if someone was given a Quran, they couldn't read it, of course. It was impossible to read. It was possible to read as you read any Arabic text without dots and uh, without the critical marks nowadays. And you know, many ulama in the past, they were very lazy to put even dots, so they, they would have written it without everything. And it was possible to read, but certain points, of course, you didn't know how to read it. And that's what happened to the Quran. There were certain verses which you didn't know how to read it. And that's why you could not just take a Quran and read it. For a Quran, you needed a teacher to teach you how to read it. And these teachers, when the, uh, the Uthmani uh, unified text was compiled in Medina, seven copies were sent to different cities, and seven Qaris were sent to teach them how to read it. And these seven Qaris then, of course, they had differences in recitation, in memory. These variants came about. So we had these seven recitations or 14 recitations or whatever. However, all of them became obsolete. Only one remained, and this is the halves from us, and this is what we are reciting now. So just one final question. From your knowledge, is there a concerted effort in the modern world from the scholars based in Medina and Al-Azhar, etc., to dilute this or to change this now? No. No, no, there is not. No one actually can change this now. This is something which has been established as the Quran among the Muslims now. Thank you, sister. Uh, before we go back to Brad, any sisters? Any sisters? No, Riyad. Uh, sorry, Sheikh. This brings me to something that happened a couple of months ago. We were at a burial, and uh, some uh, mosque leaders were actually. Uh, asking to put a few Qurans into the grave. Because, Inside? Yes. Uh. And I was there, so I must tell you this. And they said, this is not the Quran that the Shias follow. It is different. So I challenged the person and I said, no, hang on a second. There is no difference in the Quran script itself, is there? He goes, no, it's the commentary that's written by the uh, takfiris or whoever you call them. And it's in the commentary that uh, it's not good for the Shias. Have you actually seen a Quran in which the commentary is written and it's uh, maybe accusing uh, Ali ibn Talib of atrocities in the commentary? No. But, but first of all, why they wanted to bury the Qurans with the, with the person? That, that, this is very strange. <laughs> it's not, because I, I was there, I can tell you, it mm. does happen. It's where these people are afraid of putting the Quran letters in recycling bins. Oh, I see. So they with to the preserve the sanctity of the okay. writing of the Quran, the letters. Oh, okay. Uh, so I, my question to you is, uh, at the end, the person who was getting married, one of the... Um, getting buried, one of their relatives actually took hold of the Quran and said, I am responsible for this Quran 
and I will put it to good use. So there was a bit of um, an, an, an argument between the two, but the Quran wasn't buried, thank God. But um, do you, have you seen Qurans which actually blame the Ahlul Bayt so that the Shias don't believe in that copy being circulated? Maybe something is written recently because the world of Islam is becoming very mad recently, isn't it? I mean, you have these people who support Yazid now in Saudi Arabia and such. Maybe, I don't know, I'm not aware of that. Of course, the, 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 the bulk of Muslim scholarship, they respect Ali, peace be upon him, at least as one of the highest companions of the Prophet. So maybe recently something has happened, I don't know. So in closing, you you have not seen a Quran which you don't no. agree with? No, no. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much. You mean, I do not agree with commentary? The, uh, no, the Quran copy itself. So whatever commentary is in there, it's actually in the Quran. So maybe in the, well, they have a translation in English, and then maybe the commentary, which is obviously enclosed in the same book. So it's not a separate... Uh, commentaries, of course, you may disagree with many commentaries of the Quran. I mean, uh, people have expressed their views on different verses of the Quran, and you may not agree with them, okay? But uh, anything which insults Ahlul Bayt, I haven't seen, no. Any commentary which insults Ahlul Bayt, I haven't seen, no. Okay, but as long as we're clear that the Quran should not have been buried... We don't have in any tradition that you it's good to bury a Quran with a dead person. No, nothing, nothing like that we have. Um, maybe that. this is an insult to the Quran to bury. That was my feeling, yes. and that's why I was concerned. Thank you. Hassan. I just want to say that this practice of adding Quran and Dua and Turba and other bits at the time of burial, with the intention may be cleaned in terms of, yeah, it's one way of um, uh, not discarding not wanted material, but it gives a very wrong impression mm. the, to the people around to see what is happening. Yes. So I just want to say, make this yeah. comment. Thank you. Any Thank sisters you. before we close the session? Anybody? No? Thank you, Muhammad Wali Muhammad.